Let's discuss the deep six muscles. Now these muscles are the deep external hip rotators. Now before we get started, let's identify a few landmarks that will help us kind of orientate as to where these muscles are. Using this hand, this would be the greater trochanter. You can feel that, that kind of bony prominence. And then we find the ischium and the ischial tuberosity right here. Moving a little superior, so all of the deep external hip rotators attach into the greater trochanter, the majority of them coming off of the ischium, except for the piriformis, which comes off of the uh, anterior part of the sacrum. Now they would be in this area here. And this is important to note because a lot of practitioners and students alike when learning anatomy often think of these muscles as being up in this area, but they're not. They're actually down and through here. Deep to that first layer, the gluteus maximus, this would be the second layer of the posterior pelvic muscles. Now, an easy way to remember these muscles is by using your hand. If you lay your hand across from the trochanter to the ischium, superior to inferiorly, if we look at the thumb as it angles slightly upwards, this would be the piriformis. Then we have the superior gemellus, the obturator internus, inferior gemellus, and the obturator externus. Now there would be a sixth muscle that would lay on top of the obturator externus, that being the quadratus femoris. And that actually makes the obturator externus the only muscle that is not visible in that second layer of the posterior pelvic muscles. Now all of these muscles function to externally rotate the hip when the pelvis is fixed. First, let's look at the piriformis muscle. If we look at the skeleton, we can see that its origin is on the anterior aspect of the sacrum, coming through the greater sciatic notch here, inserting onto the greater trochanter. Now if we move back and show it on Mickey, we've taped a few uh, strips of tape across showing you the origin at the sacrum, obviously it would be anterior, coming diagonally across, inserting onto the greater trochanter. Now let's take a look at the origin and insertion of the superior gemellus. Now going back to the skeleton, it'll be more specific on the skeleton. The origin is off the ischial spine here, coming across and inserting onto the greater trochanter. And now we've taped this on Mickey, to give you an idea of the general orientation of the muscles, this green line here being the superior gemellus from the ischial spine to the uh, greater trochanter. Now let's look at the origin and insertion of the obturator internus. And we'll look at the skeleton, it's a little more specific here. It originates on the posterior surface of the obturator membrane and the interior surface of the obturator foramen coming across to insert on the medial greater trochanter of the femur. And as you can see, it lies superior to the uh, superior gemellus. Now we've taped this on Mickey. Using the red tape here, you can see originating from the obturator foramen, inserting onto the medial greater trochanter and this muscle does lie on top of the superior gemellus. Now let's look at the origin and insertion of the inferior gemellus. So once again, we'll be looking at the skeleton. Now we've marked the inferior gemellus in blue, originating off of the ischial tuberosity, coming across and inserting on the medial aspect of the greater trochanter of the femur. Now we'll go back and look at Mickey here to give you a visual representation. The inferior gemellus in blue here, as you can see, the obturator internus lies on top of the superior gemellus in green and the inferior gemellus in blue. Now let's take a look at the obturator externus. Once again, looking at the skeleton, we've used kind of a sparkly uh, violet colored tape here. The origin of the obturator externus is from the surface of the pelvic bone around the 
obturator foramen, its pathway as it comes across posterior to the femoral neck and it inserts onto the fossa on the medial surface of the greater trochanter here. So if we go and take a look at Mickey once again, you can see we've designated here in the sparkly tape. So it would come off of the pelvic bone surrounding the obturator foramen, coming across and inserting on the fossa at the medial aspect of the uh, head of the greater trochanter. Now let's take a look at the last deep six muscle, the quadratus femoris. So once again, we're looking at the skeleton first. We've used orange tape to highlight the muscle. So the quadratus femoris originates off the ischial tuberosity, coming straight horizontally across and inserting onto the posterior aspect of the greater trochanter of the femur, as well as the intertrochanteric crest of the femur. So if we look at Mickey again, you can see the orange tape here. It would originate off of the ischial tuberosity, coming horizontally across and then inserting onto that posterior aspect of the greater trochanter of the femur, as well as the intertrochanteric crest. Now, let's look at all the muscles again. And we're going to use uh, my hand here to kind of designate where the muscles are orientated. So once again, if we place our hand across, and you can see the thumb coming slightly upwards at an angle, this would be the piriformis. Then we would have the superior gemellus, the obturator internus, the inferior gemellus, and then we would have the obturator externus, which would be covered by the last muscle we discussed, the quadratus femoris. So let's talk about palpation and muscle testing of the deep six. When we talk about the different structures, there's going to be some anatomical differences between individuals in terms of where these structures are exactly. And the way we can actually discern where it is on that person is to test the strength of those muscles. Now, if we actually get on the hip here, what we're going to do in terms of muscle testing is where this would actually be external or lateral rotation of the thigh when I bring the leg in. Now, during this process, I'm going to get Mickey to actually push against my leg. Good. And that will be the component in terms of trying to contract or test the strength of the muscle. Okay, when we palpate, we want to make sure that we're palpating with the ends of our fingers because we have more tactile stimulation on the pads. Now, what we want to do is we want to find out where the posterior superior iliac spine is and then the apex of the sacrum. And in between here, just a little bit lateral of the sacrum, we'll take our fingers here. Now, Mickey, why don't you just push against me there? Good. And I'm just going to get in there and kind of strum back and forth a little bit. Okay, just relax for a sec. Not quite on it. Okay. And again, push. There we go. Now we're getting a good contraction. I can feel it actually pop up underneath my finger. And I would actually get in this area and kind of strum back and forth here. Push again. And that way I can feel exactly where the piriformis muscle is. Now, the piriformis and the quadratus femoris are actually the easiest muscles to palpate. Now, what I would do is I would go down to where the ischial tuberosity is here. And then I would move over from there, and I'm just going to get you to just push again. In. There we go. And again, you can feel some kind of contraction. And you're going to get in and just going to kind of palpate over from this area here. Good. And kind of work our way around here. Now, the deeper of the muscles, whether we're talking about the obturators or the glomeli, they're very small muscles and they're a little harder to palpate, so we kind of go in between there. Now, as Evangelos was explaining the positions of these muscles, the ones that I'd highly recommend is, is working on the piriformis and then figure out where the quadratus femoris is. And the other muscles in between here, these are all part, are referred to as the mobile wad of six. Literally, these muscles are quite fused together. So you probably just want to go in the general region here, find the area, and push in, and then actually just go around and you're going to feel some contraction, relax, push again, and when you feel that contraction, the muscle will kind of pop up underneath your hand. And you can feel whether or not the muscle is engaging. This will actually show you where those structures are, and then to be able to palpate around the area and see if there's any restrictions.